the most must listen to show on the internet. Welcome to AEG. I am your host, JB. I didn't fuck that up this week. And I have Dalton with me. What's up, everybody? And I have Marlon. Marlon. And hey. for the very first time, our good friend, uh, you may know him from the AEG GT Sport Racing Series, Ryan, better known as Rykev. Hey, what's up, guys? How's it going? All right. So. Rykev, obviously, like you said, is from the uh, AEG series. I actually started playing with him back in GTA 5. We, we tried to start up a racing series back then. And That's awesome. It came out, but, and then I actually ended up deleting him from my friends, friends list because I never played with him. And then, like, the Gran Turismo Sport beta launched before the game came out. And I was in a random lobby, and he was in there. I was like, oh, shit. That's so I reacted really him. And I don't plan on deleting him anytime he soon. Just, he so. just crawled his way back in. Yeah, He's I would not be here if it wasn't for that lobby. Yeah, he forced yep. himself, forced himself in back into your life, Dalton. Yep, he's he's in it forever now. <laughs> yeah. Turns out he lives in northern Ohio too, so it just it's weird, just yeah. weird. Small it's world funny. kind of shit right there. Yeah. But so basically... this week we will be yeah. discussing a little bit about what you're playing. I think I'm the only one that's actually played major stuff uh, other than uh, our second topic, which is going to be uh, EA as a whole. Um, and Apex Legends and uh, the Anthem stuff that is starting to come to light, um, which we'll get to later. Um, and then we're also going to round things out with uh, talking a little bit more about the AEG GT Sport Racing Series, which is in its 10th week. We are the final race is this Sunday. Yep. Um, I got my so, yeah, where ready do we go? Oh, shit. He's ready. He's going to take that win, even though he doesn't have to. Yeah, he doesn't have to, man. Calm down. Slow your roll there, Rykev. <laughs> Please, um... Like a Pat his stats. <laughs> Do it. Because if you're going to be in the show and you're going to talk the talk, you better walk the walk, bro. <laughs> yeah. Better come up with a win. You, you, just, awesome. you just said that to millions of listeners that you, <laughs> yeah. you know, going to shut some fuckers down. <laughs> Whoa, Jeff! Language. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm I'm fired up tonight. We're you know we're making. Yes. I'm I'm just I'm so jazzed on AEG. I mean we've been making. How much strides. progress have we made just this last week? Right, like just getting this, this last getting week. Getting this show up onto Google Play, getting our website yes. decked out, getting. Marlon, thank out. you for that. Thank you so much for doing that, Marlon. Yes. For real. Marlon, truly, thank you. No, no, don't don't even thank me. There's there's still a lot more work to work on the website. I'm just happy that I did a little bit of work. It's I know the then, abomination that I made. Right, uh, and then, yeah, like Dalton and I cranking out reviews left and right here over the past week. We've put out four reviews in the last like five days, six yeah. days. So rocking it. Yeah, I, and um, I still got Pokemon review. Oh my god, it's, yeah, it's that's right. Pokemon review. I'm gonna give you, a, I'm gonna give you a little bit more time since you did spend like he spent like four or five hours, maybe right. even longer. I don't know because he got out of the party chat to work on the. He's like, dude, I can't talk to you right now. I'm working on this. I'm like, dude, that's fine. So <laughs> hours. <laughs> well, I again, man, thank I'll, you so I'll much, something. and, and Dalton, thank something. you for finally, you know, tackling the whole getting us up on Google Play, trying to get you know the word out about who we are and you know what we do. Building. 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 But, so. tackling this website, uh, I, don't, I'm, yes. I don't mean to cut you off, Jeff, but no, tackling this website, I realized something, you know, that the people that this is their job 24-7, that this is the thing that they do for a living, I got to give them my props for that, bro, because it it's can get work. frustrating when it comes to editing out, and you think that everything is coming up correctly, you think that everything is being, you know, laid out just the way you want it to, and then you preview it and then you realize oh well didn't mean to do that didn't mean to do that that definitely doesn't work and it's that trial and error process that it's takes such a long time and this is just for like a GoDaddy website i'm not asking yeah. you know, like html you're not doing coding for like CSS, css right that thing can you imagine just doing that kind of stuff and coding well, and realizing everything we, went wrong <laughs> we are average everyday gaming so everything we do. It's everything implied. we do, we, f we figure out on our own, and so far I think we're doing a hell of a job. Yeah. Every like every giveaway we do, every payout we do, everything like that comes out of our pockets. Like there's no there's no right. profit here. Um, we're actually losing money with this, but it's just something that we enjoy doing. So, right. and I mean the big thing that I like 
what a cool like ramp up to our two year anniversary. Yes, that's coming up very shortly. A couple right, weeks. Within the next few weeks. Mm-hmm. March tenth. Um, so yeah, let's get into the, we've spent a little bit too much time on this. Let's get into the EA Apex Legends, and we're all excited. We're all excited yeah. to be. No, you're good. Yeah, I was going to say, So like, basically, I... EA's stock took a nosedive yep. a couple weeks ago, and then they released the free-to-play Apex Legends, which is a Titanfall spinoff. Yep. But it's Battle Royale. Yep. And, and they... And the hero class is similar to Overwatch. Yeah, 1 million concurrent players in the first 72 hours. Yeah. Insane. So the stocks have, you know, rebounded quite a bit. Um, EA seems to be doing quite well. But it's I mean, funny to talk about the uh, stocks is that I was telling a friend of mine, and I told him, listen, because he was talking about business models and, you know, the gaming industry, and he was talking about EA. And I told him, listen, if you want to buy stocks right now, this is the time because this is the time where EA stocks are the lowest that has been the entire year. You should buy them right now. He doesn't believe me. He just tells me I'm a a nut job. I I shouldn't be doing this type of thing, you know. Well, with trending trending video game right now in the video game industry, they probably didn't think the stocks were going to come back. Not anytime soon anyway. People that basically jump on that bandwagon early on, bro, they made a killing. Like – Insane oh yeah. Amount of money that they made on that thing, and and it, and to me, it tells you how one game can turn around a t- an entire company around, you know. Yeah. And well, I mean, well, let's not say turn around because EA is know. one of the biggest. Right. I was gonna say like they game. they weren't. I mean, I'm sure they weren't hurting for money, but things were looking right, not very like Activision. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, so they released um Apex Legends, which. I think Ryke could probably speak the most about because he's been playing the absolute shit out of it. I played. Yep. I actually played a couple hours this afternoon. Yeah, Ryke, have you got anything to add about Apex Legends? I know, like you said, you've been putting some time into it on both PS4 and PC, correct? Yeah, correct. I just think it's a really overall good game. Um, they did a great job with the fluidity of it. I know it had some problems at the start, like on PC, they're having problems with people getting friends together and stuff like that. But I mean. You just saw the transfer from Fortnite to Apex, and it was insane. And I mean, I don't see it going anywhere. You know, I just see it keep growing. Yeah, I mean, if if we're gonna talk about you know like pillars of the battle royale genre, like right now, it is like Fortnite still at the top because of you know the amount of time that they've been around and the amount of people that they've gathered. But Apex Legends is slowly gathering, and then you kind of have PUBG yeah. down there doing their own thing. They're really big <laughs> in the like non-American markets, like the American, right. the Western market, and PUBG is like it's it's popular, but not nearly as popular as it is in like Europe and stuff like that. Yeah, and I want to um, point out that they actually had two tournaments this past week for Apex already. One was a yeah. fifty fifty thousand dollar payout, and one was a twenty thousand dollar payout. Right. That's like two, impressive because what did this just launch? What two weeks ago? Yeah, yeah. Uh, About... February fourth. So yeah, yeah. literally. Two weeks. Two today. weeks ago today. <laughs> yeah. So that's it. That's impressive. And it was a game that, like, honestly, maybe I wasn't paying attention, but I didn't really know about this launch until maybe a couple days before it actually launched. That so nobody yeah. knew about it. They literally they so they, they didn't got market released it because or they, they fly a bunch. They flew a bunch of people out and had like this, you know, content creator like buzz like get like expo where you know getting you know showing people the game you know getting people excited about it getting people the these content creators that can get the word out very quickly to you know show it off and play it and then literally monday morning boom we announced it boom here it is like yeah uh, and i want to talk about about that it's, it's funny how you said that content creators were allowed to get into this thing you know a lot of the people in the uh, journalist media for video games, you know, they had an embargo. They couldn't talk about this stuff. Yep, they couldn't talk about it till Monday morning. They were so like, you know, mad and pissed about the whole situation because they thought, hey, I'm doing this for a living and I can get into, and this YouTuber guys are taking my job. What the hell? So there was a lot of backlash from you know journalists, mil- journalists, uh, game journalists and stuff like that. But the funny and, thing is. All of these game journalists that were had that initial backlash, that's like every podcast I've listened to this week, they are all just gushing over this game. Exactly. Which is it's a fun game. It, I was going to say, 
I like the more time I put into it, especially a couple hours a day, I'm really enjoying it. Is it going to be, is it going to have legs for me personally? Probably not. I'll find something, you know, some single player game that I get super into and, you know, put it on the shelf. But, you know, right. when my friends want to play it, stuff like that, like, yeah, I'll hop in and play a few matches. Like, it's it's not going anywhere off my hard drive, right. I guess, is the best way to put it. Yeah, I'll just say that Battle Royale is not my thing personally. I've made that clear in a lot of episodes <laughs> that we've talked about. I've actually gone out, gone as far as shit talking. Shit right, talking like battle royale games. You can hear Dalton's like real time expressions of battle royale because him and I. You can hear my hour, yeah. We spent for about an hour Saturday afternoon. Yeah, you can hear my old man coming out like. Yeah, these kids but, these days with that damn battle royale. I yeah, like even Apex was not my thing. I it was all right for me, but I. Uh, I get where the hype is with this one, if that makes sense. Like, I didn't personally enjoy it because I don't personally enjoy this genre. But I can appreciate this a lot more than I can appreciate, say, a Fortnite. Maybe not a PUBG because PUBG is a little bit more on the, I don't know. I don't want to say two realistic different, side. Like, Battlefield. Yeah, really. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Here's a little uh, snippet for you. So, um, talking about Battle Royale. So, when I finally got Ace Combat 7, you know, and... I was so happy to getting into the multiplayer, and I'm going, okay, let's see what we have. And the first mode that I get into is Battle Royale, and I'm going, wait, what is this? And it's, and it's I realize how deep this mode is getting into today's gaming. I mean, it's not just... Well, wild. yeah, look, at it, it's on Red Dead Redemption, for Christ's sakes. They have their own Battle Royale in that game. Yeah, every, every game in their brother is putting in some type... Of, if it's competitive multiplayer, it's going to have some form of a Battle Royale. They want a slice of that pie. I mean, look, think about it. Like, how much, how many millions of dollars are these Battle Royale games raking in every, every day? So... Everyone wants a piece of that right now. It's obviously Absolutely. it's obviously the trend. It's what people are into right now, and there's nothing wrong with that. But no, I mean, and... I don't. I don't blame any of these developers for trying to incorporate it into their game either. No, I mean my my biggest thing, and we'll kind of start pivoting to the other you know major topic of discussion. Um, EA, yes, they made a probably very good move for themselves in putting this out there and probably building themselves a lot of revenue. Cause like you said, Dalton, you said 1 million players within the first 72 hours, 1 million concurrent, concurrent players. players. Yeah. So that was, it was like 3 million hours. or something like yeah, that. 25 million people, um, you know, pl you know, played within the first, I think it was a week. Yeah. I, I don't really, I don't remember all the stats. I, I, I don't was know the exact about it, off but... the top of my head, but if you think about it, Yes, that's a brilliant move for them. Yes, the game was free. Anybody can go out and download it. Pulled attention away from Fortnite, which is a huge thing. Gets all people's eyes to start moving towards EA. And not only that, if you think about that, 25 million people in one week. If every if every one of those people, and I'm not, I'm I'm sure they all didn't. Every one of those people though spent one dollar on that game. That's 25 million bucks. <clears throat> like if you think about it that way, like that is a huge, you know, win. For EA, a company that, you know, was, they were starting to trend down. Like, I was, I was nervous there for a second. I mean, they're one of the biggest gaming companies in the world. I don't think they're going to go under, but crazier things have happened. But right. it's such an insane idea to put this thing out there and just, it took over. Like, Fortnite was the name of the game. Like, that is what everybody was still talking about. No matter, you could not escape Fortnite anywhere. And now it's starting to become Apex Legends, and I honestly, personally feel that Apex Legends is the better game. Yes, and you can see it too with some of the top streamers that have kind of made their made their living off of Fortnite, or kind of migrating over to Apex Legends right. too. Which, which some of that was EA paying them money to promote their right, game. but that tri that that trial period's over. They're not paying them anymore. Exactly, but I think it's also a funny thing is you know yes, you said these people made their name on Fortnite. It's one of those things where they're probably you know, ecstatic that they have something else to play other than Fortnite. Yeah. Exactly. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you why. Because by having Fortnite, you already have this community of who's the top ranked players, who's middle of the pack. 
by creating this new game of Ape, from Apex Legends, now levels of the playing field yeah, again. Levels of yep. playing field. So now you're gonna have new streamers that's gonna get make their name by Apex by using Apex Legends. You're gonna right, make. Which you saw that like yeah. Rykev was talking about in the tournaments. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and so this game has been out two weeks, and there's already tournaments. I actually did not know about that until Rykev said that. And I'm pretty sure Ninja won both of them. It's of course, oh, no it's, shit. It's pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. Dude need, that dude needs more money. <laughs> there's no denying that he's really fucking good at video games. Yeah. yeah. You gotta, it's like that. He, he, as of right now, you could say that he's like the Tom Brady when it comes to battle royales. Like that guy has won a he was, lot. Yeah, he knows his stuff. Yeah, if I didn't have to go to work and I didn't have kids and stuff, I'd be pretty damn solid at video games, too. Right. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> throwing shade. I, I just want to add one thing, and is the thing that sets me, sets Apex apart for me than Fortnite is the fact that you have different characters you can choose from, and the fact that they'll constantly be coming out with new characters as time goes on. Right. I think that's really cool, instead of, like, like, Fortnite, for example, you don't have that sort of customization or personal feel towards a certain character you know you just go in there everyone's the same thing it's just weapons right and you I, know? I love right. that the I, i'm sure you enjoyed this as well rock have like the customization screen for like if you have like a specific hero or you know legend Pose, you got, yeah. you get poses and flags yeah. and outfits and shit it reminds me a lot of overwatch yeah it does very similar setup in that regard which is I super guess... cool yeah no, i have never actually played overwatch to be honest with you you really should man it's a very yeah. very good game it's a great game. And they I also be being pissed at one game of the year, 2016? Yeah. That sounds about right. I was pretty uh, pissed about that. But... <laughs> You're mad about I everything, wanna... Dalton. Just... I, I want to say that Overwatch <laughs> just started their second season of Overwatch League. Uh, it goes through Wednesday through Sunday, and they just added six new teams. It's a pretty big deal. They signed deals with ESPN, Disney, oh. to stream all the games. It's really grown Incredibly I fast. I know that. That's really yeah, that's impressive because I actually thought Overwatch was actually on the down swing. Honestly, I didn't know they, they were. Still st- their, I knew they, they still, still, had still their community. played it. Yeah. yeah, I knew they still had their community. I just didn't know. From last I heard, they were on a down swing, but apparently I, I've been out of the Overwatch loop for a while. Right. I'll be the but first to hear Overwatch. I don't find the gameplay not be, not not fun because it's 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 really what i see is really fun i just doesn't click for me yeah. so i was gonna strike up like for somebody who doesn't play for, uh, overwatch and that kind of stuff you know what would you say to me to like get me into like the, the whole competitive aspect of overwatch like what would you say i would definitely lean towards the strategy aspect of it and the fact that you have a team of six people and you have almost 30 characters now you really have to talk use your mic you really have to communicate hey i gotta do this you gotta do that and there's so many different small details that go into every single match everybody has a role everyone has a role it's and that's what i like about it coming from growing up and playing team sports to have that really push into a video game is incredible and i love it just working with a team so like that actually so, go ahead Mama. go ahead i was gonna, gonna say that you say that it, it draws a parallel with you know league of legends and stuff like that there are definitely some comparisons to it and similarities um i i mean one's different like first person shooter that kind of stuff but the yeah. teamwork aspect is definitely there it's the same that, that's what i was thinking because when i see a lot of players from playing overwatch it's always like a, a team of six i barely see like uh, any like one uh, single player two or a two-man team it's always six. So yeah, competitive that... is always six v six. But there are like one v one modes and stuff like that. But competitive is always six v six. I actually want to use Rykev's um, talk of like the whole team sports thing, and especially in in video games. Like he said, he grew up playing team sports, and he likes that aspect, and that's what kind of draws him to Overwatch. I want to use that to segue into my next thing. I've actually been trying lately to recruit my friends into buying Anthem. You can ask them. I've been pretty goddamn annoying about it. <laughs> but now, after reading these reviews that have really just come to light today, and like I, today is like the – I mean it, it, it's been all weekend because right. obviously people I, got the and trial I also this wanna weekend. Take, I want to take people using the word reviews as a grain of salt. These are more impressions. Yes. Uh, like, 
impressions of the game. That's basically what yeah, you want but, to do. Yeah, uh, but people are throwing around review the word reviews like it's nothing. But it, it's it, from what I've read, the I've read almost every article that you know you had sent me, Dalton, and I'd found some on my own. Like, well, yeah, we were, we were we were sending back and forth today quite a bit, yeah. and they were honestly, quite frankly, mostly negative. There was. There's. I mean, I mean, everybody says that the game plays good. Is one of the prettiest games ever. Like. But it's empty and hollow. Yeah. It is. A and obviously they're going to. Be. Yeah, they're going to add content to it, but we don't know exactly when that's going to happen. And again, this... we don't know how long it's going to take. Right. We don't know if we're going to be uninterested in playing the game by the time any of that shit drops. Right. Because it was. It's honestly. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the launch of Sea of Thieves. You know, going into that launch, like, you, Goose, who's not on the show tonight, but, like, we were fucking jazzed for that game. Yes. We were so excited. And then we got in there, and it's like, oh, this is it? This is all the game? And then now, you know, almost a year later, the game is completely different. I heard it's awesome now. That's I heard, why I yeah, texted from you what the other I heard, day and I mean, asked we if you wanted to play it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, from what I've heard, it's awesome. And I'm afraid that Anthem is going to suffer that same fate. All right. I, and it's, it's looking like it's going to. Like, it, honestly, you know, I'm going to buy it. I'm still buying it. Okay. Still gonna I was going to ask the question because you, you floated at a couple times today. You were, like, feeling real rocky on it. Um, no, I'm still considering canceling the PS4 pre-order because, remember, I bought my laptop this week, and it, comes, it came with a free copy of Anthem. So I'm oh, getting the shit. game no okay. matter what. So if if I'm gonna get it on both, but I am I I am debating that I really am and I I'm still gonna play it. I'm gonna give it my best, like my I'm gonna give it my open mind and all that shit. But right, and the same thing. It's with sounding like right. maybe 10, 15 hours in is where it's gonna start losing traction, and I don't I don't like the sound of that. It's it's got me worried. And and, and from what I hear, it's not just that the game is bad. They said no, the I've shooting the game feels itself. good and everything. It's just it's it just feels disjointed from what I you know from what I was reading it's it from what people's impressions saying that it feels very you know empty and repetitive and you know once you've done something in the first few hours you're you know that's all you're gonna do and it I don't know I yeah don't know how else to describe what you're saying this game I was looking for this to be my destiny one right so. And it feels back like bare bones Kev's... Destiny one, if not even more so. Right, and back to Rykev's team sports thing. Destiny one, even PVE, PVE especially, man. You work together as a team, especially when you're in a raid. Remember, I remember doing Vault of Glass for the first couple times. And it's just, I'm hoping, I was hoping that this game was going to be like that, and it's just not sounding like it's going to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. I don't know, man. I can't. I have not played yet, so I don't. I don't have right, the authority. Like... Like, I'll here. be, I'll, I, you know, I'll be honest, like, I did the EA Access, <clears throat> I played for about an hour on Friday night, and if this is any indication, I didn't play anymore the rest of the weekend. And I'm just wondering, and real quick, do you think that was a thing with the game, or do you think it's because you didn't have anyone to play with, because you were on Xbox? Probably, yeah, it's probably a combination of the two. Like, I see where the game's going, but the shooting felt really hollow, gameplay-wise. Like, it was very... Like, I can already see, and, like, after reading the impressions, kind of confirmed it. Like, the gameplay loop of go to this area, kill these guys, defend this checkpoint, kill more of these guys, okay, rinse, repeat. Like, I can see where where they're coming from on that. And then, yes, obviously, I, I had nobody to play with on Xbox, and everybody that I know is getting this game on PS4, so I'm like, right. eh, like, am I gonna sink ten out ten hours of the the you know trials ten hours long? Am I gonna sink ten hours into my Xbox and a new Xbox character, and then abandon it? Abandon it and do it all over again, you know, a week later. I just wanted to get a feel for the full on game. I wanted to see if the servers hold it. I wanted to see if there's any glitches, anything like that, which there weren't from what I played. I only played like an hour, so. Right. Yeah, so this comes back to – now, this kind of goes back to the uh, Apex thing a little bit. I know this – obviously, Anthem is an EA. Type. They're they're yeah. publishing it, right? Um, yes. BioWare, developing it, but BioWare – EA owns BioWare. 
So you think with the success of Apex, if if Anthem doesn't do as well out of the gates as they maybe thought, or maybe player base starts leaving, do you think? No, I don't want to say they've entirely abandoned it, but do you think that the success of Apex will play into that at all? That's actually was a big point that I wanted to bring up. I, you know, I was kind of starting to lead into it when I was talking earlier, but like, you know, EA now with the success, like the rampant su- success of Apex. Yeah, we can call it a success of... now. It's it's okay. a success. Yeah, it is safe to call Apex a success. Yes. Like, completely safe to do so. Right. Like, it is kind of like EA is almost shooting themselves in the foot. Or they knew that Anthem is not going to take off the way that they were expecting it to. So yeah. they released this other property, which, no, it's not the same type of game, not even by a long no. shot. Oh, no, not even close, but... But this thing that they are hoping would catch fire, which did, and now, you know... It's now Apex covered their three, ass. Yeah, if Anth- exactly, they're covering their ass. If Anthem doesn't perform, then they can put all their chips into the Apex basket. Right, and I think the sales are going to be there. For Anthem, so I don't think they're going to lose too much money on this. No, I don't either, because, I mean, they, they've they been hyping this game up for, what, two years now? Yeah, I think it was revealed at E3 2017 is when it yeah, was I think, I think revealed. So, yeah. I'm not 100% sure. Please I'm fact pretty check sure me on that correct. anyone listening. Um, that's just from going off of memory I'll, right I'll now. I'll look it up. You can keep talking. Um, but, yeah, that's... That's kind of what I've been worried about since the uh, success of Apex. And I know, obviously, Respawn and BioWare are two different teams, but they're still, like I said, they're still under that EA umbrella. Yes, it was debuted at E3 2017. Okay. I think, depending on how successful both Anthem and Apex uh, plays out, they might do cross-references and cross-promotional for both games. They might see that they... It might put like microtransactions stuff like that that refers or you know references Apex and vice I, versa. I really hope they don't do something like that. I wanna. I just wanna real quick while we're talking about this. I don't want anyone listening to think I want Anthem to fail because no. I don't. You could ask any of these guys. I've been hyping this game up. I've been wanting to play the shit out of this game. Um, Same. I'm for doing me. another I, I podcast series like that's a... just Anthem with some other buddies of ours. So I, I don't want that to fail either. You know what I mean? So I I don't want Anthem to fail. I want this game to be awesome. But it's just after what I'm reading, after what I'm seeing, it's just not looking too promising right now. It's I'll tell you this. Keeping a very, you know, hands up uh, Anthem and the way that it is, not because I don't see potential in the game, because I do. It's just that I got burned with certain games. But I know that at the end they do end up coming better. Um, yeah, I'm almost wondering if this is going to be like a Destiny 2 year one thing again, where and, oh, it's not good until a year later. Yeah, and then by then, then it's kind of too late. I know Marlin and a lot of the other TMSG guys have stuck by it, and credit to those guys for sticking by it. It's it's their home, you know. That's where they go. They play together, and that's that's awesome that they were able to do that. But for a lot of us, man, we just it was too little, too late at that time, and. I'm worried that Anthem is heading right in that direction. Yeah. But we also got to give props to, you know, Bible. They've been really responsive on Twitter and social media when it comes to certain, you know, critiques and certain, you know, aspects of the game that some people have had some issues with. Well, I mean, yes. the big Who thing that I've been like, reading that's like, people, like months. Yeah. And so I'm, in that aspect, I'm happy that Bioware is, you know, communicating with the community and is telling them, hey, listen, we understand your you know, situations, we understand, you know, your apprehension about this game. But trust me, we will be there to help you out with any type of issues you guys have. And we'll right. have a very open communication. Um, I just don't want to see, like, another, like, Sea of Thieves or, uh, not not Sea of Thieves, but uh, uh, No Man's Sky, where it was <laughs> fine. Or, like, the yeah. longest. No, no, I don't want anything like that happening with this game. Rykev, do you have any, any thoughts on the EA Apex to Anthem? Um, drama we've got going on. I know you've had to listen to me talk about Anthem for the last couple of weeks. Yes, almost so. every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't. I just. I'm just gonna wait and see how it does when it comes out. I'm not right. big into the 
non PvP. Yeah. You know, PvE kind of side. So I'll see how it, how it goes when it finally releases and see what you guys have to say about it. Right, and that's a good point. Is Anthem's not going to have any PvP? Nope. Yeah. Um. So. So there's that. I mean, if there's anything like the raids though, Rykev, um, like the raids in Destiny, those are so fun. Like those, those require a lot of yeah. Those require a lot of communications. And if they have something like that, I don't think there's going to be anything like that at launch. I don't know for sure on that. I have not really read all that. I don't know if they've even really talked about that all all that much. Yeah. But that will be that'll be the saving grace with this game as if you know, you take your four I think four man is the maximum team you can have an anthem right now. Yeah. Take your four man team and take down a raid boss or whatever they end up calling them in that game. That'll be that'll be the saving quality, but well like I, I said, it could be a little too late. Like, we don't like, know. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm that's the biggest thing that I'm afraid of. Yes, we may you know, Anthem at launch and Anthem, you know, even six months from now, may be two 100% different products. And I hope, like, like you know, you said too, Dalton, I do not want to see Anthem fail. I want it to succeed. I want, you know, how we have the three pillars of Battle Royale. I want to have the, you know, the three pillars of loot shooters, you know, with, you know, Destiny, Division. Anthem, and Division all kind of doing their own thing, having their own audience, and being all good games. Um, yes, yes. But I'm afraid that what we get at launch won't be enough to keep people around for when they do put that extra content in the game. Yeah. And by then, people will have already moved on. And I think and that's a good point is like people moving on. You've got The Division coming out almost exactly a month after right. Anthem. So three weeks, what happens actually. if there's no – yeah, what happens if there's like people run out of content in that three weeks? They're going to get The Division. A lot of people are. And then and maybe the division. On. I mean, the vision already has kind of shown that it's going to have more to do. Yes, so. and I'm not a fan of the division. Not the first. I wasn't the first one anyway. I can't say anything about the second one. But right. so yeah, like what? If, that's a huge chunk of the player base that they could potentially lose here in three weeks. Yeah. So uh-huh. who knows, man? Um, There's I mean, a the lot of factors too, really... in this anthem thing. What's that? There's a lot of factors in this anthem controversy for sure. And, and I'm in going back to the actual gameplay. The biggest thing that I keep reading from a lot of people is there's a point in the story that everybody's referring to as the wall. Yep. Yep. Um, I read about that too. I re- real quick, I want to go over it if if you don't mind. Nope, don't care. Okay. So <laughs> what I was reading about um, was essentially people were saying that it gets to a point in the story where you have to open these four tombs. Um, yep. And when you do so, each tomb to open it gives you a gives you a, a checklist. Uh-huh. Four um, things, tombs, things, sixteen to total, sixteen total 16 things. Sixteen total items to do, and they're not retroactive, so you have to start them from that point. So it's like do five missions, or do a stronghold, or get multi kills, or get fifty melee kills, and all of this stuff. And they said just to get past that is multiple hours of grinding content. Like just It's busy work. It's busy work busy is work. what it is. And then the the worst part from what I was reading is once you do that busy work and open these tombs, it's a little cutscene, no story content, and some loot, and you're done. Yeah, that's disappointing. So that's no not going to sit well. there's no reward for that amount of work. Like – and one of the one of the articles I was reading said like I would be fine if that was all like a side content like something to do to pass the time to wait for your friends to be online and what have you. Right, but, but you have it to is do a it. Main story, you have to do it to finish the story of Anthem. Yeah, so, that's that's not going to sit it, well. Like like I was saying earlier, like I'm afraid it's not even that the game is bad. It's design decisions are going to make people actively not want to continue playing anthem and that's right. again what i'm really worried about is the plus what we're hearing about the emptiness of it what's that yep. like you just said it, the content's not going to be there the emptiness yes so pretty world but empty so right. we'll see we'll see you here we, in yeah i was gonna say we're, st- we're still gonna stream it on friday hopefully dalton will be there if he still keeps his ps4 copy yeah i'll be there i promise i'd stream so i'll spend this 70 dollars if if you want to keep your PS4 copy, I don't mind throwing money in the trash. <laughs> I 
Hey, you, know, you can do a giveaway, you know, something like that. Uh, Maybe. You could Maybe. do a giveaway. Gently yeah, used I... copy of Anthem giving away. <laughs> no code for nothing. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much all I want to say on that. I think we should wrap the Anthem topic up now because – Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll – I don't want to get into shit-talking territory before I play a game, so. Right. I mean, so, yeah, Friday, mm-hmm. uh, 7 p.m. Mm-hmm. on our Twitch and YouTube channels. I will be streaming on Twitch. Dalton will be streaming on YouTube. Um, yeah. We're going to get a group So if you want to watch the better game, put the watch on YouTube because yeah. – <laughs> Yep. No, if you want to see what it looks like to carry your team, watch on YouTube. Yeah. If you want to see what it's like to get carried, watch on our Twitch. Pretty much. I'm not <laughs> even going to, like, deny that. <laughs> but, no, but, but, yeah. So we're, that's going to lead us into yep. our last topic of the night, um, and that's the Gran Turismo Sport Racing Series. And we have one of the drivers here with us, obviously. He's been here the one whole time. The, one of the champions. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, Rykev winning the Group 3 category this year. Fucking dominating the Group 3 category, we'll say. Oh, yeah. he's, won, he's won six of the nine races so far. There's one more left. And then two second places and one fourth. I was going to say, you so, almost won yesterday. Yeah. yeah. I Honestly, the whole race yesterday, I was just focusing on getting Tham to catch up to Toddy. Yeah, Toddy just threw that race away yesterday. Yeah. Absolutely threw it away. It was so frustrating to watch. Like I saw that. Look, look, yeah, I saw, saw that. that. Oh no! <laughs> Why are you doing this, Taddy? No, no. She oh, forgot like, to pit oh, and then tried to cut oh. it over and then hit the pit wall. And then on the lap, she had to go ahead and run another lap. She ran out of fuel on that lap. So. Yeah. So. And if I, if I think about it, because the minute I saw that, you know who it reminded me of. Last year, when we were doing the what was it, the oval, and basically Goose got like what second place because I ran out of fuel and almost everybody else ran out of fuel. <laughs> oh, last that? year at this track, that was this track last year. Yeah, yeah, Phil, yeah. Phil ended up getting second place because everybody ran out of fuel. <laughs> but yeah, so so yeah, yesterday's race was round nine at the oval. Rykev ended up finishing second. Second, I believe. Yep. Yep, second place. Obviously, you had the title wrapped up, so it's just a, you know, yeah, I was more do whatever. Happy with with a second place. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Especially well, in six the Porsche. Place. Yeah, yeah. The the Porsche was at a, at a disadvantage yesterday, I think. But yeah. I was yeah, so, happy during the whole series. I had two races. I had my mindset, and that was the Magior, like Magior. Is that how you pronounce it? Yep. yep. Yeah, and um, I think that. Yeah, and then yeah. Interlagos. Those are my two. I pride myself on. I make sure I win won those two. Yeah, and uh, Interlagos. That's two years in a row for you because you won that race last year. Yep. Yep. Uh, only had two wins last year. You ended up missing three or four races last year. So. Yeah. Unfortunately. That kinda, but that meet up for it. Yeah, absolutely. This year, six wins. Obviously, most wins in in a season ever. We've only had two seasons, but. Six wins, possibly going for seven this weekend. Seventy okay. percent. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see how second place pans out. Yeah, me too. That was interesting as hell yesterday. I'm happy for him. I'm I'm just glad it's that close with the yeah. numbers we've had lately. I'm just glad that we have something to look forward to and really watch and pay attention to. So. Okay. Yeah, and next year we have there's gonna, there's going to be some changes to the series next year. Um, we're only going to run one class. We didn't have the reliable player count this year that I was hoping for. We started off strong. First two rounds, we had quite a few people. Mm-hmm. And then after that, it kind of tapered off. So next year, some, I want to say we did have some really good races this year, though. Yes. Some really oh, fun, fun races to watch. Even when that. there was hardly any people racing, the, like the people that did race, it was just really, really good. So looking forward to next year for sure. Absolutely. One of my highlight races was the race between that you had with uh, Galaxy. And for me, I thought he was going to catch up. I honestly thought he was going to be Oh, you're talking up. about the first oval? Yeah. And, and uh, uh, yeah. could not – he just could not get into the right rhythm. Uh, he ran uh, it out of fuel. Rykev knew what he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> like, Rykev, I got you. You don't got me. I got you. I, I, I could, 
and just by looking at the stream and just by the way that you saw that race, you could tell that Galaxy was like, I do this, I can do this, and then like, eh, no, no, can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Galaxy was doing what he had to do though too. He had nothing to lose. He's going for it. That's you can't yeah. blame him there either. I'm so cautious yeah. with my fuel on those ovals. Like I, I was texting Dalton really. Damn it, I still had like two laps left of fuel at the end of yesterday's race because I yeah. didn't want to take too much. I'm just so worried about fuel on those on those races. Yeah, well, it ended up working out. Obviously, with Toddy with those mistakes and stuff, she was just saving all kinds of fuel. If she hadn't done that, there was just no way. Yeah. But, but Toddy is is the boss at saving fuel for sure. She's really, really good at that. That's like one of her strong suits. Absolutely. It's extremely surprising. When I first raced her, I was, I don't know if it was the first race or the second one that we were really close and she just came out of the pit like four seconds ahead of me, even though we went in together. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. She does that. It's crazy. And she can run those lap times too while doing it, which is impressive. Mm -hmm. But I definitely have to learn from her. Yeah, absolutely. I hope I hope she's part of the series again next year. A lot of fun too. Her per, she got a great personality and everything. So absolutely, definitely looking forward to it. We've built a decent community with this. Um, Rykev will be back next year to help me run this series. He's obviously, I'm assuming he's planning on participating again. Yeah, I'm planning on. So yeah, we'll be back. We're gonna, like I said, few rule changes, one class. We're gonna try to just get as many people as possible. Um, I may do the same thing next year with uh, missing up to three races and still receiving last place points or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we may have a new points for, format next year. I have not decided if I'm going to go with the one from last year or the one from this year. Okay. I'm going to let the I'm going to let the guys vote on that. But it will be all yeah and gal yep we have one. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to let them vote on it. I'm going to let them vote on what vehicle class they'd like to run. It's going to be between two. It's going to be group two or group three. So look out for that. We don't know what that'll be next year. Yeah. My uh, my standpoint is that it's always group three just because I like the variety of cars. Yeah. I like seeing the, the fight between the AMW, the BMW, the Audi, the Porsche, the Jag. You got all of them in there. I like that. Instead of like group two is mostly what the GTR, right? Yeah, the GTR because the GTR was the most solid all-around car. Yeah. And- I personally, I prefer to drive the Group 2 cars, but like Rykev was saying, the, the variety is just not there with the Group yeah. 2. The Super the super GT cars in real life, there's only like three different manufacturers of those. so It's funny. Uh, when we were doing the, the Group 2 races, I always felt like, well, this is just another way of doing NASCAR races. Because <laughs> everybody was rocking the same thing. And I'm going, okay, um, <laughs> I can't complain about when I lose this shit because I suck at this. So... Yeah, but it was really fun watching the Group 3 car, uh, races. It was just mm-hmm. wholesome fun. There, there was always something happening that, that just made you think what was going to happen in this race. Uh, for the Group 2, it was always, okay, Phil is going to take off. Wairika is going to take off. Uh, Goose, if he doesn't miss, make a mistake, <laughs> might be able to make it into third place or second place. And Yeah, that was the thing I noticed the first two rounds when I actually raced with you guys. Group two, we were all spread out. Like there was no battles anywhere in the group two lineup. We were yeah. all just spread way out. And then group three, you guys always had battles. Like whether it be for the lead or for like fifth place, there was always something going on somewhere in the group three class. Yeah. So that's another thing. I want to. I'm looking forward to all one class next year. So you're really gonna have to like learn how to manage points and stuff if we have you know a decent lineup and everything. So. Mm-hmm. I think next year is going to be really, really, really successful, and hopefully Rykev doesn't win seven, eight races next year. <laughs> I do want to say, you fucking <laughs> break the curve, man. Um, I do want to say that Dam and Brandon also had really good series going into it. Um, I was talking to Brandon earlier. I was practicing with him, and he was saying he's going to come back next year, and he's a little bit more motivated because he thinks he can take this series as serious enough. But he's going to come back next year and definitely try a lot harder than this year. So I'm looking forward yeah, and to I want to I want to give a shout out to those guys because uh, fam, I met at GTA 5 still at Brandon as well. I met all you guys through that series, and yeah. I didn't really know Brandon all that well going into the series, but I'm really really glad to have him on board. He's he's a great dude. He he he's enjoyed the shit out of the series so far. I know uh, after the first week, I remember immediately after the race, he didn't even join our like. Our little broadcast after the race, he went and immediately started practicing the round yeah. two track. 
Yeah. And he obviously got busy throughout the year and stuff and whatnot, but he still had a hell of a season, man. He he could still technically get second in points, but it's not it's not likely right now. He lost quite a bit of points last week, but I was happy for how he did because this is his first Gran Turismo, first time having a yeah. wheel. Yeah, and he did good. Yep. Started off the season with a couple podiums too right away. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm impressed, man. Bam, he's a great addition too. He's a good dude. He's going to be getting Anthem and playing with us this weekend as well. Very cool. Yeah, so, and one more thing I want to talk about. Um, obviously, the season's wrapped up. GT season, we got one more race. Battle for second is on between Tham, Toddy, and Brandon. They're separated by 10 points. Tham's got second by five over Toddy, and then Toddy's another five ahead of Brandon. But as soon as that race is over, we're going to start gearing up for the AEG three hour. <laughs> yeah. So we've got an endurance race coming up. It's going to be three hours long, obviously. It's in the title. Um, we're going to be running the Group 1 or the LMP1 cars. And should be interesting, man. Those cars are fast. They're easy to drive, so it's going to level the playing field and three hours long. So these guys are going to have to manage, manage their race. I've already been trying to plan out what car I'm going to use. I've been testing. Hell yeah. I actually made myself a livery for it. I'm not going to run. I've already decided, but I was fucking around with the liveries, and these cars are not easy to design for, so. Yeah. But yeah, that's what we have to look forward to. Yeah, it's going to be really cool. It's been super fun uh, being in the booth with you uh, this year, Dalton, and I'm I'm definitely going to try to shoot for that again next year. Absolutely. I'll say that, okay? What'd you say, White Sun? I might just be on the booth next year. I'll say just I'll just say that right yeah. now. Yeah. Just... Um, White Sun, actually, do you want to call the three hour with me? Uh no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find someone to do it. Yeah, I was gonna say it's I, not, I, I... One, It's just that the way that my things are set up, I don't think you want to be hearing in the background. While actually, I don't it. think you can do it anyway. It's gonna be on a Saturday afternoon. You'll be at work. Um. Yeah. Anything you want to add, Rykev? I know, like, obviously, Champion got... Rykev's already been paid his winnings by AEG. Yeah. Um, we'll be doing that again next year. There'll be another payout for the top three drivers. I just want to say I'm happy with how the series go went for everyone. And I like that we kept it semi-competitive. And even going to the last race, it's competitive between three people. I'm just happy to see that. Yeah. Yeah, me too, man. I... I think it's going to be even better next year. This year, this year was even better than last year, and I think it's just going to keep keep building. Yep. Cool. Four, awesome. Four. Guys. All right. Is there <laughs> anything else anyone wants to add before yeah. we wrap this thing up? Any, anybody got anything else? No, I, I think okay. we hit much every point that we wanted to talk about this yeah. week. Unless Rykev, our guest here, wants to say something. Um. Yeah. Rykev. Uh. Just want to say thanks everyone who watches i want to say uh thanks to all my fans <laughs> cheering you on if you're out there it's so humble they are they are uh, awesome. humble. So rich. Uh, <laughs> i've had fans asking me when the nude calendar is coming out and I, was, I couldn't answer that yet i don't can want to give do it away a, can we do yeah <laughs> I, is there enough people for 12 months where we can do like a aeg gt sport nude calendar like everybody making poses on cars and shit <laughs> Yeah, that that is coming soon. All right. 2020 calendar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That's crazy. Um, anything else, Dalton, you want to throw out there? Nope, just want to thank uh, Rycap for coming on the show, man. I've yeah. been trying to get you guys on here quite a few times. It just it hasn't worked out lately. But I think, think it would be really now. fun maybe after the final race this Sunday to do a, like, a mini – AEG show with try to get as many of the racers as we can talking about it. Yeah, and uh, Rykev, we'd definitely love to, yeah, we'd love to have you on again too sometime man, if you want. Absolutely, even even not about GT, like any you know, you you know your shit. You got you, you got this. Yep. Yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate yeah, no it. Problem. It's been um, fun. So yeah, real quick, uh, feel free to check out uh, AverageEverydayGaming.com. Um, it new and improved, thanks to Marlin. Um, there are reviews that we just put up, like Dalton said, four reviews this week. Uh, I reviewed, reviewed Resident Evil 2 uh, and Kingdom Hearts 3, and Dalton reviewed uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 
and uh, Motor uh, Super Monster too. Moto Supercross. Monster Energy Supercross too. God, you fucking noob. Yeah, Jesus. I I, I wasn't even a try. They just I, sound like a bunch of morons. Yeah, you know, we're <laughs> average motherfucker. Nope. Yeah, follow uh, us on uh, Twitter at Average Gaming Seventeen. Yes. Um, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Average Everyday Gaming, if you yep. could. That'd and be wonderful. And our Twitch channel, Average Everyday Gaming. Yes, and then our Instagram, which we don't ever use because we don't post pictures. Yeah, we need to do but, that shit yeah. more. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Those <laughs> are deliveries. You, you yeah. might not want to be talking about this in the podcast, just to say the least. Okay. That's what I'll do <laughs> next year. I'll start posting, you know, your guys' deliveries in the uh, Instagram. Yeah. For the good idea. I like that. Yep. All yeah, right. So. That's going to be it for this week. Yes, thank you guys as always, and we will see you next week with another episode of the AEG Show.